Hey, Adam. Yo. What you know about this? You hear me talking? Uh, how about some of this? Woo, what about this? <laughs> Just trying to talk. Oh, yeah, man. I'm Adam Annis. And I'm Peter Martin. And you're listening to the You'll Hear It podcast. Daily music coming at you, remote style. Remote style. Bueno. This, is our, this is our first YouTube video remote, buddy. I know. Hey, hi. Yeah, it looks good, man. I like your the setup behind you. It was just, it looked like an ins insane asylum wall for, for a few weeks, which is why <laughs> we weren't going in. It's still then, pretty insane asylum-ish, though. Yeah. And then with me, there's a good chance you could just see like kids going to the fridge to get cheese sticks. I want to see that, man. Come on. Or like, you know, a very old looking dog, like hobbling along. This is this is where we are now in the world. You know what I'm saying? That's right. So, but um, we are sheltering at home and we are, we are you'll hear it remotely yeah, yeah. both yeah. at the same time, right? Yeah, we've been you'll hear it for a few weeks, but this is our first uh, attempt at going on to YouTube. You know, we've really tried to up our YouTube game this year. Yeah. And we, it's just taken a couple weeks to get our, our home studio setups going. I'm not even fully set up like you with your with your big lens there that can get all close. I'm still using my computer video, but we're going to even up it more in the weeks to come. So uh, look out for those. Yep. You're, you're at potato quality. I'm at sweet potato quality, but you're going to be here too soon. <laughs> I am kind of a potato quality. We'll oh, see. Look, we'll see. Get this out of the way. Yeah, got, man. Got, got my fire hazard space. Janky. All right. Uh, so today we're talking about seven ways to make the piano talk. I was listening to something and uh, to some recording, as I've been listening to a lot of recordings lately, and the piano player was just talking. And mm. I was like, what are they doing that makes it sound like they're just emoting without being locked into what we consider just a series of buttons? Really is essentially what it is, of hammers hitting a string. Yes. We don't have those same... We don't have the breath like a, a vocalist or a trumpet player. We don't have the ability to bend notes you know, in a traditional sense. <laughs> I'm trying. Wait, I mean, wait, you could try. Wait, wait, wait. All... Wait. I got. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, we can do it with our Hammer 88s, but on a regular piano. Uh, it just takes no effort to do that. <laughs> you know, nor skill. Yeah, it's not like a it's not like a no horn player where you have to develop years of an embouchure to really be able to no. emote like that. Um, so we thought, what are the things that do take some amount of technique that can help us emote and make the piano talk? Yes, absolutely. And, um, you know, some of the things, it's interesting being kind of thrust into some new environments. We're often at the piano. I mean, we were at the Hammer 88s across from each other, of course, too. Uh, but the, the types of things that we're talking about, I think, are stuff that listeners really take for granted when they're done well by a pianist. You know, it's like one of those things that you make it sound like it's easy. But as you alluded to, this being a, you know, the piano keyboard being a, um, a machine in a lot of ways, something that is hard to emote on or that it's not necessarily hard, but it's it's not as simple as, as, as it's not as direct. That's what it is, maybe as like saxophone or vocals, yeah. the most direct kind of cello, 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 you know, with the cello, are we there? You know, with the um, with the bow going across it. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. It, it's like any of these things, if you get that sound in your ear, in your head, um, and you know, what better to do than emulate the great pianist, especially we talk about classical pianists when they're kind of slowing it down and great jazz, pian any, any, any kind of great pianist that can really emote and, and create a sound. That's what we're looking for. That's right. So the first one that comes to mind for me, number one is yeah. grace notes. I think this yeah. is like, if you look back at the history of keyboard instruments, this seems to be one of the first things that composers would put in to make something, you know. Uh, sound mimicking the human voice or a violin or something that can gliss. And that could be as simple, literally, as just, you know, and it could be something of a double stop, which we'll get into later. But yep. the, the idea of, of gracing, you know, even I like to do stuff like... Because yep. it gives you, like, that's that's to me like what, what someone like Prince would sing. You know? That's right, right, right. And so well, I can... Cool. 
Well, Good. I was just saying that's really cool too. I love that one because you know the grace note was separating it far out because then you get into an area where we're not just trying to do like other instruments. It's almost like that's some stuff that only we can do, especially when, unless you're Prince. Uh, but you know, <laughs> right, when right. we when we spread it out that much, that's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, awesome. so number two, these are glisses. Now Ooh. we do have an advantage here that glissing for us is is one of the first things that when you're two years old and you get near anywhere near a piano yeah any two-year-old the or three-year-old or four-year-old the five-year-old or 50-year-old does this <laughs> that's right right you know what i mean even even your typical youtube cat video back in the uh early 2000s would feature some glissandos by a little kitty cat as it scurried across the keyboard right that's right that's right <laughs> and so what that is to me is just a big like whoa that <laughs> that gliss from the top to the bottom is a big like emotive thing but there are other ways uh that you can gliss so like i like one like a little palm up <laughs> organ style or you could even just just do like say i'm in i'm in g here i can just roll my fingers you know as like a yeah. from the yeah. from the bottom up things like that can have that kind of emotion can you demo the uh the the first one you did the what's that with the palm because yeah, that's so I'm, that's actually I'm, one that yeah go ahead so lick it, it first <laughs> no i'm just kidding i'm just kidding uh so yeah so you know, you see organ, you see B3 players do that. Uh, to me, that's a great one. And that one's a little easier on the organ or a keyboard with the plastic keys than on your traditional acoustic piano, I believe. You, you could be getting into some injury uh, on a piano, It's hard. Perhaps. You could do the thumb. I always found that to be a little whatever. You could do the side of the finger. It's probably easiest, like right. here, just kind of like creating a bit of a... Yep. Yeah, that, that could be. Something. You might be, uh, yeah, because you do that on, on an old uh, piano with ivory keys, perhaps. You might be having to call Dr. Chuck Goldfarb for, some, right. uh, for some orthopedic work after that. One of my favorite glissers was actually Nat King Cole. Uh, when he would, he had a right-hand gliss where he would be like, you know, like. Ah, like he did yeah. that all the time. Like he had a target note, right? Yep. And so it very much mimics what, what like a horn player would do. Yeah, and you know what I think would make that especially um, effective that Nat King Gold did, and a lot of pianists kind of took it from that. It was do ya? It was right in time. It wasn't yeah. just a random like Liberace ish. Big shout out to Liberace, great pianist, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but not known Gliss for his Master. in time. <laughs> What's that? Gliss Master Liberace. <laughs> I know, but you know what I'm saying. His was more of a a Vegasy yeah. kind of open ended candelabra type of uh, glissando. Yeah, again. Nat King Cole was going for more of a vocal thing of like, yeah, like when you kind of scoop up, you know, across your range, that's what right. he was doing. Yeah. Right, 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 right. Um, good. All right. So uh, that's Glisses. Let's, let me let me jump on number three because I like this one. You I might have like even, this one. I feel like I coined the name for this, although I probably didn't, but this is the bluesy double stop. I think this is your phrase and now we've made it a thing. And, and look, I'm going to make you a little jelly here right now. What? So you can kind of see what's happening. Did you see what? that? I can't see your hands anymore, though, bud. What's that? Can't see your hands anymore. Oh, sorry. Okay, let me come back out. So I, I, I overplayed my <laughs> hand there. We're talking about Vegas. See? Oh. Can you see him now? Yeah. Okay. Ooh. That's your bluesy double stop. That's that's like a compound bluesy double stop situation. That speaks for itself. I mean, that's something that piano players have been doing for generations. And we actually have a whole, you'll hear it, video on bluesy double stops. Go check that out in the archives. It's called... Bluesy double stops. Oh, come on, man. We're direct, <laughs> man. But but yeah, one little trick with this. I mean, yeah, check out the video because we kind of go, we, we go on a deep dive. But but I think the trick to making this effective, first of all, is, is hearing the same thing like with the hearing it in time with that gliss, but also hearing what you want it to sound like. And obviously this takes some practice so that you start to match it up. But it can't be, it's all about what double stops. And now when we say double stops, we're talking about two notes or, or more at once. Um, but it's which ones you're going to leave out because that's yeah. where the, the phrase, because really you want a cohesive phrase you know, and it's usually bluesy. That's why it's a bluesy double stop, but you want to have that cohesion on the bottom. So you're leaving some of the, it's never about the top note. It's always about, I mean, in terms of the phrase, the top note is just accentuating coming in and out rhythmically and, um, articulation wise, accentuating what the main line is, which is at the bottom. That's true. 
All right, number four are clusters. Now, these, we typically think of clusters as like left-hand voicings, right? Yeah. Cluster voicings or whatever. But you can use these in your right hand as a melodic device. Pete, you look like you want to play something. Well, no, I was had, it's had an idea. Like, what if we both played... Because uh, we're, we're thinking about what's difficult about doing you'll hear it remote, but there can be some fun things about it, too. So Quarantining chance. can be fun. So okay. let's but let's do a cluster both at the same time. We're not going to say what we're going to do. We're going to go one, two, three, cluster, and see okay. if we can make some music together. All right, ready? Okay. Yep. Yep. One, two, three. <laughs> and we couldn't really hear each other, so we don't know if that was good or not, right? <laughs> yeah. We'll have to wait till the episode comes out. <laughs> well, I played this. I don't even know. Is uh, that a cluster or is that too big? No, that's perfect. I played okay. this. Yeah, it's kind of a kind of. A, uh, you're kind of like on the inside of mine there. Yeah. yeah, these are great because these really can take the. I mean, even two note, half steps, three notes, whole steps. All of these can give you like you don't have to do a whole Jason Moranish. Um, although that is fun occasionally, or a Chick Corea. You know, uh, which, but you which can, almost goes into the territory of number seven, but I won't go there yet. Not yet. Number, yeah, so, yeah. but these can be used as like this is almost a grace note. This is almost a gliss. It's like somewhere between those, right? Where you can like. Yeah. Again, we're getting, you know, talking about bending a note. Yeah. Kind of getting that note in between those two notes when you cluster them together. And then you could go as far as like trying to talk. You know, with clusters. That's fun too. But really I'm thinking more of just a way to kind of bend notes. Yeah. Add that that humanness to it. Yeah, I think this one actually out of all these in a way from a melodic standpoint is is one of the best ways to really get the piano talking. And it, and I mean, it really works hand in hand. It's kind of an extension of the grace note. For sure. Yeah. For sure. All right. Uh, number five. Okay. Number five. This is tremolos. And this is very appropriate because the great Herbie Hancock had a birthday yesterday. Did you I know, know that? No, man. 80 years old. 80 years old. 80 years Amazing. young. Yeah. Wow. Guy's so, timeless. Now, a lot of pianists, certainly going way back before even Herbie Hancock was was doing his thing, have done tremolos. It's been a, a part of the vernacular of pianists in many styles. But has anybody popularized and caused more lionization of the tremolo than Mr. Herbert Hancock. No, especially if you want to talk about something like right. Yeah. You know, that tremolo specifically is all Herbie. Uh, also known as busting a Herbie. Busting a Herbie. We've <laughs> all done it. Yeah. I mean, at this point when I'm about to go do it, it's just like Herbie's like image flashes in my face and i'm like thank you you know it thank used to, you. i used to be self-conscious about like a lawsuit coming now i'm just like no nah, it's all good now what do you know though about maybe some oscar peterson style you know like trembling trem tremming chords whole chords together or even yeah yeah gene harris comes to mind with that that's too. right what you can yeah. do is you can now extend notes right the one thing we can't do that trumpet players all horn players all vocalists anybody who works with their breath one thing we can't do is is control that vibration once it's started, right? We have the attack and that's it. So right. much like how guitar players or mandolinists have to tremolo right. to get an extended note, we can do that too. Now that's one you can work on. Hammer 88's not responding to me that great. But, or Pita Williams it. <laughs> and two, two-handed. But it works really easier and better to just octave it. Well, and I think too, you were actually already doing this. Like, Woo. like the, the volume level that you're going in and out of really makes a big difference too. You were kind of naturally sure. doing that. And that's, if, if, if we think, oh, as, as pianists, as keyboards were restricted, think back to the harpsichord where you were, you were striking the note and there was no, no, I guess it's plucking the note. Is the harpsichord plucking it? I believe so, yeah. Yeah, but there's no control over the volume. So you can't do anything phrasing wise as far as dynamics. It's that's it's just kind of what it is. So like we actually do have that be able to control that like like the dynamics and the articulation is a big way, even though we can't control one note, but when we go to tremolos or grace notes or any of these things to really get into that talking kind of sound. It's awesome. It's awesome. Uh number six. Number this is six. learn how to phrase like a singer. Come on. 
And you do know, you, oh, go ahead. No, I was just, do you know what it means to miss New Orleans? <laughs> Breathe like a singer. Breathe, exactly. Put phrases. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. And the Hammer 88 is a little difficult, but it's possible. No, it is possible. And it's, it's one thing that I think the piano does really well at is playing things in sort of that melodic style. We can get very, very beautiful melodies out of this instrument in almost every range. And, yeah. you know, what we tend to fall back into is the typewriter, right? You know, yeah. and then we all want to be, uh, you know, John Coltrane on the piano. And so we, we type, 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 type. But don't forget, yeah. Coltrane played a lot of things like a singer. Like he, you know, yeah. uh, and, and our favorite pianists do too. It's not just all, you know, Eighth note, eighth note. I mean, it is for some people, but but really, the the greats could and do um, phrase at at appropriate times, like a vocalist. Yeah, and if you think about the process, like you know, a lot of times when uh, you know pianists will say, "Okay, I'm going to phrase like a singer. I'm going to phrase like a saxophonist," and they think about it as they get into the phrase, and that's important. But I say, think about it as you're starting the phrase. So that starts with the breath, because that has such a natural. Um, connection with how you're going to start to construct a phrase. And it's just like saying a sentence or telling a story or starting a relationship or doing a lot of things that have some kind of an arc and, and a place that you're coming and going. Um, if you start things out right, everything can sort of start to fall into place. Whereas on the piano, we so if you're playing saxophone and you mentioned John Coltrane, so you know... Um, uh, <laughs> So that's the first phrase on giant step. So if you play it like a typewriter, that's how you do it. You just start playing. But think about what he had to do. That's a long phrase. I mean, a relatively long phrase. He had to get a big breath, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's like, you know, so it's like we have to do that in terms of how we start the phrase. And you can't, like, use the same amount of uh, breath and energy right at the beginning of the phrase because you're, you know. And they, of course, great saxophone is doing that instinctively. But it is. It's like thinking, breathing interpreting like a singer will take you very far in making the piano and then just hearing like that, you know, and that's why we, we preach so much. Not only you'll hear it, but we preach sing as you're practicing because there's nothing like matching up how the piano can possibly sound, or at least as close as it can get to a vocal kind of phrasing, um, like singing along and, and, and you, you know, starting to internalize what, what it is, the promised land for you as a pianist. I think it's so important. Yeah, man. All right, number seven, our final one. This, this is, is yours. kind of a we're, bonus, right? This is a little, little controversial. A bonus, you, you, yeah. you, you were poo pooing this one a little bit. Well, it's it is only something that we are good at as pianists, and <laughs> it is oh the casino lick. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> We've Which done I, some stuff on this before. Yeah, we have, but I didn't know what this was until I was mocked by a a a, a, a so called YouTuber, a, a minor YouTuber, I might add. No, no, but this this is like I of course I knew the sound. Well, why don't you demo it? Because you you've got a great concept on this one. Yeah, casino lick is essentially. I mean, if we want to just go straight up casino style, <laughs> that's like straight jackpot. It's that's like picking... that's like Branson, Missouri style. <laughs> It's another way to kind of extend, you know, a note to sustain it, like a tremolo. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, just this rolling up or down. I love it when they're moving around. That's the exciting ones. The ones that are just like, you know. Yeah. Those, those are ridiculous. Yeah, totally. I mean, I play so all the time. those casino licks, check out our video on that, too. That's kind of like Bluesy Double Stops. A bit of a hit for us. Wait, we did and, a casino lick. You, uh, episode? I think we did, yeah. Wow. Okay. Nice. Or so it's been talk- a part of our, our okay. of our episodes before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah we, we we we've talked about. It. Um, cool. Well, you know what? I feel like my piano's talking now. We nailed it. <laughs> so if you're a pianist who wants more of this stuff, go to OpenStudioJazz.com and check out the Piano Access Pass. Peter Martin has a weekly lesson called the Jazz Piano Method that he's been doing for I don't know seven, eight years now. Yes. Yeah. Since I was I was uh, in my Early teens is when I first started it. Actually, wait, do I have... Wait, can you talk to the people for a second? Because I got something funny to show you and them. Can you talk to them for a second? Yeah, sure. No, so there are literally hundreds of lessons here at uh, OpenStudioJazz.com for piano. So Peter has his Jazz Piano Method. That's a new lesson every week. And then I had started about a month ago a daily guided practice session. Seven days a week. I'm practicing for about 20 to 25 minutes 
every day and you're practicing with me. We set the metronome. I tell you what scale or what arpeggio or my Phillips exercises out here. And that's become very popular. But between those two things, you get something new every week or every day. And then on top of that, all the other regular standalone courses we have, jazz chords for beginners, uh, elements of jazz piano, all of Jeffrey Keezer's jazz piano courses, which are incredible. So uh, what do you got? Okay, so... That was good. You're still talking when I came back. You might think this is a paper bag. I'm like a magician, you know. What do you know about this? That's a flip. I bought my mother-in-law one in 2007 for wow, Christmas. Wow, you, yeah. you were really uh, wooing your wife well then. I just remember it was like, yeah, this is like it. Just plug it in, you go. Yeah, so this is what... That's how long I've been doing. The original... Uh, actually, we're the yeah, the first couple lessons were recorded on this. I think we finally archived them. But yeah, this is a flip cam. This is an HD... Oh uh, no, it's not. It's not HD. It's <laughs> no square. Way, it? It's potato quality. Potato <laughs> quality. <laughs> yeah, that's but radish I mean, quality. <laughs> yeah, built-in mic. You know, this is pre-iPhone. It's called uh, the company's called Pure Digital, and uh, yeah, it had a little little mic uh, input there. I wonder if they're still around. Pure Digital. Oh uh, no, I don't think so. A lot of people had those flips, man. A lot of people got those. Yeah, this was it, but this was the beginning. This was before there was like cameras on iPhones. <laughs> this is before iPhones, buddy. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, All right. Cool. Well, thanks. Thanks, everybody, for our first uh, journey into YouTube uh, social distancing. This is fun. Let's do more of these. Let's do it. How about tomorrow? Sounds good. You'll hear it. <laughs>